Hello, today we continue with move additive and just a reminder that we are really pulling off with the knowledge and with our program. To catch up with us, please go through the beginning of this tutorial just that you have a feeling what are we doing and technically how are we doing it. Okay, let's focus on today's topic which is move additive. In previous video we showed how move relative is behaving but now we want to see move additive okay first declaration of our instance again traditionally so mc move additive axis 0 1 f2 mc move Additive semicolon again. We need to call an instance in our motion function blocks. Move additive this is about it now visualization and let's go frame mc move additive hmm. reference to our instance application move additive enter because last time we were using trace let's change one parameter here and change move relative and then here additive dot execute okay that's it let's compile today before we log in looks good log in download run and our axis is running so right click download trace and our trace is running let's go to visualization and first of all enable a drive then let's execute set position just to put everything to zero let's check our trace okay so maybe we can add trace here or better let's add it here and again we will execute move additive for certain distance so let's put 10 with velocity 10 but okay good i made a mistake velocity 10 but we will keep distance 20 acceleration 100 the acceleration 100 we have an fb error uh-huh let's clear fb errors and let's try to execute oh, again me nice so here we see in fact that move additive is behaving exactly like move relative so let's reset view and execute one more time oh, get me okay let's stop this trace and here we see that we are just adding additional movement so if you just execute it it's 
technically identical to move relative. But now, if, so first we will execute move absolute exactly the same like we did it for move relative in previous video. So first download trace just to delete it. Let's execute set position to zero that we start again from zero. And then we will move again with some speed. Let's put acceleration, deceleration. And again, what we will do is move absolute for a half a turn. And then somewhere in the middle, we will execute move additive with a distance 20 and the rest parameters are going to be the same. Let's do it. So move absolute, we start. And then let's put it now and see what is going to be the result. It's still working, still working, still working, still working, still working. Ah, stop. Let's stop our trace and let's put it across the whole screen. Okay. So what we can see, oh, sorry, cursor and another cursor. So here we executed move absolute to 180. And then in somewhere here, we execute move additive for additional 20. And what happened? is that move additive finished at 200. So this is the behavior of move additive. It adds additional distance on previous movement. Now let's do one more test. And this is move additive with different parameters from the previous movement. So we will again put it here. Again, execute set position to zero. Let's start again our trace. So we will prepare. Let's put here 15. Let's put smaller acceleration, smaller deceleration. And let's see what will happen if we do now exactly the same. So we execute to move absolute. And then somewhere here, we execute move additive. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let's stop our trace. Let's analyze. And now it's very interesting. When we started move additive, we changed the speed ramp. It's visible that the speed increased. And that means on execute, the move additive started to generate a new profile with new target position, which was added to a target position of previous movement. But it used all other settings from the point where we executed the function block. So this is the main difference between move absolute, move relative and move additive. So this is it for today. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in next video. Bye.